We are the brink of being replaced by immigrants who neither assimilated nor integrated into a society and we are afraid that this process of Islamization will utterly destroy our identity and our democracy. I don't think it's an aggression against all Muslims to say that with Islamization and with Muslim immigration a risk of terrorism is arising. Europa, what is your answer to your critics who say you are neo-Nazi? If you see neo-Nazis everywhere, the problem is in your optics and not in the surroundings. They want to make Nazis trendy and hip again. They mount these events, maximum publicity, get it out on social media straight away. They say they're not left wing, they're not right wing, but they are like for the country, for the people. What are they um, really? Far right. They're really far right. training camp in the French Alps a few months ago. It looks like good, clean fun. But look more closely and you see the symbols and slogans revealing the true purpose of this retreat. This is a boot camp for a new movement of far-right youth. They call themselves the Identitarians. We see ourselves as the voice of a forgotten generation. We are a pan-European youth movement from France, Germany, Austria and Italy and we want to create a political change in this country, a free and open debate about issues like massive immigration and Islamization because we want to defend the identity of Europe. And this is Martin Silner, the young social media savvy leader of the group in Austria. I've come to Vienna to meet Martin and get a glimpse inside this usually secretive group. Martin, how are you? Fine, thank you. Yeah, good to see you. Nice to see you as well. Yeah. First, I noticed threatening graffiti on his gate. This, this says, Martin, you're dead. How does it make you feel? Uh, yeah, in a way, it, it shows that those people really, um, they, they think that we are not allowed to exist. Uh, welcome to my home. Oh, nice place. So what's in here, Martin? Well, um, this, this is my, cool. my Infowar home office. Um, Infowar. <laughs> yeah, it really is an Infowar. In fact, um, for us, we have seen that, that um, a good video, a good video that can go viral. Um, mm. Oh, wait, you can, you can mm. sit here if you want. Yeah. So it's not, you don't have to. Good, thank you. Oh, you're back. Uh, Sorry, yeah. If you have a good video that's going viral, viral it's, um, it's made almost as efficient as an action. It's from here Martin uploads blogs, vlogs and videos of his group's carefully planned publicity stunts to thousands of followers. And every time people see a report about, us, about our action in the media, they just one mouse click away from our own um, uh, point of view. I say there's an emotional barrier between us and the population that's been created by the media. They're portraying us as, as monsters, as demons, you know, applauding. Well, fascist, right-wing, neo-Nazis, right? Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. This recent stunt brought global attention. They scaled up and covered the statue of a famous Austrian monarch, Empress Maria Theresa, with a burqa. And what was your message to people by using that? What were you trying to say to them? The message was, if you don't stop what's happening now, that will be the future of Vienna. All our heritage, what she was fighting for, what she built up, is destroyed now by our politicians. And many people would say, particularly right now, given yeah. what's happened with the Syrians in particular, mm -hmm. these are just people who are needing sanctuary from war, they're just yeah. refugees. Austria is a, a wealthy country, Europe can afford to take some of these people and give them that future. I think Europe can definitely afford to help those people, but it would be much better to help them in place, in the areas around Syria and Turkey. Martin says by showing his face he risks being called a Nazi 
losing jobs or even being attacked by anti-fascists. But identitarians believe they're fighting for what it means to be a white European. People forced us to decide between the ideology of dogmatic multiculturalism and diversity and the fringe group of neo-Nazi going back to the 30s. But there's a mass of people who just want to go a third way. And now when you have real alternatives like um, populist patriot parties and patriotic movements like we are, we are thriving. And within just a few years we are, we are, we are uh, more successful than any, any right-wing or patriot movement before. Identitarians are tapping into a growing number of young Europeans who feel swamped by multiculturalism and feel they have no place to vent. Yeah. Inspired by online dating sites, Martin's developed a way to bring together others who share his views. But instead of lonely singles, it connects so-called patriots. Today he's explaining how it works to one of the first female members of his group. I had the idea for this app to make it easier for people because the moment you can come out as gay, whatever, no problem. But coming out as a voter for, for a patriotic party or as an identitarian is very risky. And so we, I want to give them people um, um, an easier way to do that. Alina says anti-fascists have threatened her because she's a high-profile identitarian. I get it all the time from the beginning and it's really not a pleasant thing. Do you? What sort of, yeah. what, what sort of, what sort of threats do you get? It's really rude. It's really do you want to get, can you give me, we, we don't mind. We, really can you give me personal. Um, really? I don't know, they, they call me a whore and a slut and they want to hurt me. This is Martin's crowdfunding video for the app. He says it was suspended by funding site Kickstarter after allegations of hate speech. We just need to activate these devices in the culture war, in the info war, to disrupt the firewall of political correctness and to connect the silent majority. During the day, Martin Silner studies law and philosophy. His nights are often spent here at the secret headquarters of his identitarian movement, where he's agreed to take us. Tonight, they're planning an identitarian stunt, something they've become famous for. And this soll heute eine kleine Kampfansage sein an diese Leute, aber auch an die Bevölkerung in Österreich, ein Zeichen der Hoffnung, dass wir uns dagegen wehren werden. Auf Facebook. Austria's intelligence services are watching them as a potential security threat. In the room I see mainly young men. They're part of a core group of some 400 Austrian members. And Martin says there are about 10,000 sympathizers and donors across the country. Good. The others are not here today, right? Passed. That means we meet at 20 Uhr Philipp from Burgtheater, right? Tonight they're protesting against the city council, which wants to change the name of an historic landmark, a change they see as an attack on Austria's white Christian identity. That's just a hero's place, one of the most historic places in Vienna, just next to the parliament, and uh, all of Austria's history is taking place here. Martin uses an online call-out for more identitarians to join the action. Maximal 5 bis 10 Minuten, bis die Polizei kommt. Sicherheitsabstand, nicht das Transparent abfackelt wäre, das wäre extrem bitter. Das heißt, ein, zwei Meter dahinter kann man schon stehen. Their stunt is right inside the square. Their banner says, Heroes Place Stays. <lacht> They're well equipped to do a Facebook Live, which instantly attracts hundreds of views. 
haben wir uns heute dazu entschlossen, ein Zeichen zu setzen und ein ganz deutliches Signal an die Politik zu setzen. Heldenplatz bleibt. Europa, Jugend, Reconquista! Europa, Jugend, Reconquista! Europe, Youth, Reconquista. The last word referring to a key identitarian belief that they need to retake and protect Europe from Muslim migrants. After a few minutes, they get word the police are on their way. We separate from Martin and arrange to meet up with everyone back at their secret HQ. After getting the, the banner unfurled successfully there and dispersing without the police stopping them, they're going to go back and get the video that they took of this out on social media. And that's what make this, makes this group different. They mount these events, maximum publicity, get it out on social media straight away. Within minutes of the stunt, Martin and his online team are writing a press release explaining their action and upload a video to YouTube. They say each stunt is carefully planned to stay just within the law. The Facebook Live video has more than 18,000 views. You get a real sense of their popularity when you read the comments. Europe's youth is awake. Very cool action. Respect. I love you. This action speaks directly to their main target, 15 to 25 year olds, who get most of their news and much of their views from social media. The next day, Martin wants to show me a place in his city where he feels extremely uncomfortable and angry. And this is like uh, um, uh, an area in Vienna where many migrants live. So it's like um, a Turkish street market now. So it's like... It's changed a lot. Absolutely. A once Austrian market that is now almost completely Turkish and Muslim. The problem is the dynamics of demographics. The thing is, this section of Vienna is growing. It's the future of the whole city of Vienna. We deserve a country and a culture of our own. I mean, this is just a small section. Surely there's enough Austrians of, of what you think is the correct descent to be able to balance it out. If you look at the younger generation, we have 60 to 70 percent of the children who already have a migration background. And so within just a few decades, the population has been completely replaced. This kind of rhetoric has landed Martin in trouble. Identitarians call it the great replacement. Others consider it hate speech. And just the things I told you, just the facts that I stated are already considered hate speech in Austria if you say we become a minority in our own country. You've had hate speech yeah. charges against you because you've said that. And I, I mm. have at the moment a hate speech charge running against myself mm. because um, I, I put a banner with the slogan Islamization kills on a, on a rooftop of a, of a party headquarter. These are similar slogans to those used by neo-Nazi and fascist groups. But Martin's urbane charisma and clever phrasing is helping the identitarians rebrand what far right means in Europe. As a result, identitarian cells are forming in many European cities. Martin says Angela Merkel's decision to open borders to one million Syrian refugees last summer helped create the movement and prompted a high-profile action in Berlin. What's the difference? You, you were accused by your opponents as being neo-Nazi, mm. being fascist, being right-wing. Many of the things you say, they say as well. So what, what is different between you and them? The core message is that we respect every culture and we think that, that um, normal uh, migration is, is um, yeah, just um, something that always happening, will always happen. But we, what we don't want is the massive immigration and the demographic replacement of our peoples in Europe. It's against massive immigration, non-European Islamic massive immigration. So non-European sounds racist? Why? If you say more diversity, you always mean less Europeans. And that's, in a way, in my view, is race in itself. Is it fair to say, do you think, that you use fear? Um, fear because of the way, you, you know, you mentioned the jihadis, you mentioned taking over communities. I mean, you're using fear in a way to further that goal. 
That's, I think that's completely wrong. The fear is real. The fear um, is there in the eyes of the people I talk to. We are giving them hope. We are trying to, to take this anger and frustration and fear and uh, fuel it into a demographic, um, democratic change, into, into activism, peaceful, non-violent activism. So yeah. this is uh, Mum's apple strudel. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely homemade. Um, and the typical Austrian, Austrian, Austrian food. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. And how do they feel about your work? Um, they they would prefer me to have a real job, and they would have, um, they would have uh, I think they would have preferred if I had finished my law studies, mm. be a lawyer now. Um, but in a way, they just understand that it's what I need to do. Uh, most of the time, of course, they're a bit concerned because of attacks and so on. Yeah. Mm. And do they agree with your views? Do they have the same same point of view? Or? Mm. I think overall they are conservative, mm. Christian, um, have traditional values, but um, they don't have to agree with everything I say uh, to to think that I have the right to do it. And they, they just, um, I think they just want me to do what I what I believe in and what I need to do. Mm. That sounds like it leads to some interesting conversations at home. Absolutely. Is there a, a particular moment in your upbringing or life that got you on this path? Uh, I grew up in the suburbs of Vienna, like in a, in a um, middle class Aryan family. Mm. I know that my um, political consciousness as an activist was formed in, in school when I was about 15, 16 years old. And when I suddenly realized that everybody wants me to think in a certain way. And I became patriot in, the, in that moment when I realized that um, they don't want me to be one. And that's, that's when I somehow I became rebellious in a way. Identitarians try to distance themselves from the more extreme far right. But there are those who are not so sure. In a Vienna back street is a group paid by the government to study the far right. Andreas Peham is a lead researcher here, and he's been studying Martin's growing far-right profile over a decade. Yeah, Martin Zellner is a fast schon uh, classic to name an example, also for development and development on a person uh, in right extremism. In his closest environment, uh, in 2010, 2011, wird begonnen, Leute zu verhaften, es kommt zu Hausdurchsuchungen und er steht jetzt vor der Wahl. Ja, was mache ich? Mache ich weiter wie bisher? Dann gehe ich auch ins Gefängnis oder äh, äh, mache ich etwas anderes? The identitarians say that all they're interested in doing is protecting Austrian culture and identity. Um, is that the same in any way to what the far right is saying? Die identitäre Bewegung ist eine ja, Bewegung, äh, stammend aus dem Neonazismus, das heißt, die führenden Aktivisten, die Gründungs- und Führungskader dieser identitären Bewegung stammen allesamt aus dem organisierten militanten Rechtsextremismus, den wir in Österreich auch als Neonazismus bezeichnen. Ich zähle identitäre so wie viele andere Versuche im Rechtsextremismus, auch in der Vergangenheit, eben zu jenen, die mit, dem, mit der Selbstdarstellung als Neurechte sozusagen äh, sich von Hitler befreien wollen aus dem Schatten der Vergangenheit. Also wir haben natürlich äh, einige Belege, Beweise, wenn man so will. Äh, zum einen für die neonazistische Vergangenheit äh, von Martin äh, Sellner, okay. nämlich Gottfried Küssel. Was hier wichtig ist, und auch die Nähe zeigt das an, Martin Sellner geht unmittelbar hinter dem unumstrittenen, dienstältesten, gefährlichsten, wie immer wir ihn nennen wollen, Neonazi in Österreich, sitzt auch momentan im Gefängnis. So this is, these are known Neonazis? This, this is Neonazi, this is Neonazi, this is Neonazi, all, but this guy, Martin Sellner, says no, I'm not Neonazi longer. Your own past, and you, in the past, you have been a member of a neo-Nazi neo group. In fact, it was not a certain group, but um, it was like the nationalistic scene in Austria, the far-right scene in Austria, with with diverse groups and associations. And uh, when I was was 16, 17, as I said, I started to to think in a patriotic way, 
In fact, it was the only role that society offered me in a way. So uh, the only identification model I had as a patriot who wanted to become active on the street. The only demonstra demonstrations existed were organized by those people. What has changed in you since you were a member of that group and, and now? Has there been a change or do yeah, you have the same, yeah. does it, does yeah, it absolutely. The same views? It really, I really changed because uh, I think from in a certain time I really also believed um, the stuff those people believed, so uh, being uh, part of a superior um, culture and so on and um, blame, blame you know, uh, certain groups for everything. Now I understand that it's a systematic problem, that it's, it's not a group of people, whether Muslims or Jews or anyone who is completely responsible for everything and if you get rid of those people then everybody, everything will be fine. It's a systematic problem and you have to, have to um, um, rationally think about the reasons and then with, with, with uh, emotion and vision create a change. That's, that's what we believe in now as an as a identitarian movement. Identitarians say their actions are against policies, not people. But at a recent protest at this university theatre, they did target individuals who were performing a play about refugees. And many saw the attack as violent. This is Audi Max. Actually, I think it's one of Actors the Johnny and Layla, both Syrian refugees, were performing on stage at the time. I mean, I was afraid because I don't know what is possible to happen. You know, it could be, they could be with guns, they could be with, with anything. تحس إنه في ناس عم تعيط وعم تركض ولهم كتير كتير والأطفال عم تبكي وناس كبار عم يبكوا يعني كتير كتير كم موقف مرعب. Martin's identitarians sprayed fake blood over the stage. They say to remind people of the Bataclan terror attack in Paris. It, it really opened my eyes to a lot of things because. As of for this accident, I thought like Vienna or Austria is the rabbit hole, the wonderland, and everything is fine, safe. I think yeah, that's the most controversial action we, we, we did, but I think there's a lot of wrong reporting about about this action. The problem with that is that of course that it sort of seems to tar all Muslims and Syrians with the terrorist brush. No, uh, you you think no. In fact, it was uh, again, uh, directed against the audience um, in in the in the in the room. Those people were, were from, the, from the upper class in Vienna. And um, I think that uh, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not, it's not, um, it's, I think, I don't think it's an aggression against all Muslims to say that with Islamization and with Muslim immigration, a, a risk of terrorism is arising. I think it's just a complete neutral and objective fact. We've come to Berlin to meet those opposing Martin's vision. On the capital streets, we witness the deep divisions between far left and far right that are now sweeping Europe. These protesters are not identitarians. They're openly far right extremists but they do share some similar anti-Islam sentiments. Um, then say mal herzlich willkommen bei den Stammtischkämpferinnen. In this cafe, the anti-fascist resistance are learning how to counter right-wing slogans. The inner kreis bekommt von mir eine rechte oder rassistische Parole, die ihr vorlesen könnt, gerne noch so ein bisschen vortragen könnt. Ihr im Außenkreis sollt kontern, ganz schnell. Aber alle wollen hierher kommen, weil Angela Merkel sie eingeladen hat. Das geht doch nicht. Das würde ich gerne mal sehen. Hat sie ihren persönlichen Brief geschrieben oder was? Nee, aber sie hat sich in den Medien angekündigt. Among them is Natalie, who's the voice of a left-wing anti-fascist group that sees its main role as challenging far-right movements like the Identitarians. So what they actually try to do, and I think they do it quite successful, is like that they want to make Nazis trendy and 
hip again. They, they say to themselves they're not like, they're not left wing and not right wing, but they are like patriotic for the country, for the people. And what are um, they really? Far right. They're really far right. Yeah. yeah connected. And very conservative in all ways, basically. Should there be more controls in there actually on who's actually coming in? Yeah, no, definitely not. I mean, what will you, what will you manage by that? Nothing right now. <laughs> We now have, um, have different cultures, societies living in Europe and we are the brink of uh, being replaced by immigrants who neither assimilated nor integrated into a society and already now they are changing the face of, 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 of certain areas in Europe and we are afraid that this process of Islamization will destroy, utterly destroy our identity and our democracy in the future. The name Martin Sellner is one you may hear more of, and the Identitarians is a group that may also become more familiar in the future. So, as a new nationalism sweeps Europe, it's the wider acceptability of Identitarian ideas, especially among the young, that could drag politics more to the right for many years to come.